What's up everybody? So for today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a 55 gallon drum and we're gonna turn it into a filter for the pool pond back there. So um, we got a bunch of stuff that, uh, you know, we kind of use to put it all together and stuff like that. I'll kind of give you a rundown on all of it. I'm not gonna show you all the cutting and all that junk. Nobody wants to see that stuff, right? So let's get this thing going. We'll get chopping up and uh, gluing some stuff up and stuff like that. I did some of the stuff already, so you won't have to worry about, you know, spending all that time on all that stuff. But so let's go through what we got here. So a few things you're gonna need are hole saw bits. The reason you need hole saw bits is you want to have uniseals. They're called. You can buy these at like Bulk Reef Supply or any other fish store necessarily. Uh, some stores don't carry it. You can also buy it online, of course. 55 gallon drum. Uh, you want to make sure it's food grade. Um, those are, I, I just get mine off, uh, like Facebook marketplace and stuff like that and clean them up really nice and stuff like that. Um, obviously various PVCs for this project where you, we use mostly two inch and one and a half inch, um, along with a little bit of three quarter. <clears throat> um, but that'll, that will, uh, come in play towards putting it together as to why I needed three quarters versus your, your plan, your pump that you may be using versus my pump may have a different sized output so anyways we got uh drill bits and stuff like that sandpapered because you want to sand your pvc before you glue it um teflon tape of course to hold the threaded pieces tape measure you want to make sure you're measuring everything properly a couple pliers to take stuff off screw gun pvc cutter pvc glue hacksaw soap and water the reason you use that is when you're putting in the bulkheads or the uniseals on here. Um, getting this PVC pipe in there, it requires lubrication. So use soapy water, um, it'll push it all off on its way in. So none of it will enter the barrel, even though you end up cleaning the barrel at the end anyway. A pump, uh, something somewhat powerful. Obviously this is 55 gallons, so you can fill it relatively quick <clears throat> with a proper pump. So. Um, next thing you need is a check valve. The reason you need that is because when you turn your pump off with this design, what you want to do is you want to have the pump. When you shut the pump off, you don't want it to backwash into your pond. You want to keep all that gunk inside this barrel. So, um, yeah, uh, a couple things that we also use is a shower drain. I'll show you how that's going to work later. Um, various bends and stuff like that. Also, again, depending on how you do your project, where you angle your stuff and whatnot. Now, over here on the barrel itself, we have a ball valve. This is to open and close. That way you can drain it out. <clears throat> Mine I have directed to a garden hose. Um, and basically what I'm gonna do is I got a garden hose hooked up to another pump that I'm gonna suck everything out of here. You can also use like a python and you know, and get an adapter and just hook up a python hose to your sink from there to there. Works the same. <clears throat> This is uh, one and a half inch coming out of here. So the bulkhead's one and a half inch. My output is gonna be two inch. That's gonna come out to the elbow you saw earlier. I'll show you that on the pond when I put it together. This piece is part of the check valve. And yeah, so let's get on to the next step here of putting this thing together. All right, so first things first, we have to set our barrel where we're gonna put it. Don't worry, that's not the final location for that. That's just the uh, in the midst of setup. All right, so I'll show you how this is done here. So down here on the bottom, there you go, you can probably see that better. Um, the pipe comes all the way in, it's capped on the end. It has a bunch of holes drilled in the top and then on the bottom, I did cut a couple of slits just for a little extra coverage. Um, you can see how this hose is coming in. And then this one is going to be the inlet where it's going to come in at a spiral uh, for the K1 media that we're going to be putting in here later. All right, so this is the piece that I got for um, going into the water. I might end up putting this at a 45 versus a 90 degree on here. I'm not sure yet. Um, we'll find out, I guess, how we'll see how the cards play out in the final project here and see what happens. So then for the shower head piece, 
I also drilled a bunch of holes in the bottom. I'll probably end up doing more. This is kind of a test. I did glue this just because it doesn't need to, you know, come apart. Um, all the other pieces I can take apart if needed, take them out, you know, replace the unit seals or whatnot. Um, but this is going to go on that two inch in the middle. So you can kind of see how that's going to work. So that's going to hang out right there. Um, it's going to allow the water not to fill fully in the barrel, but fall in and out. Next step is hooking up the check valve to the pump itself. What we're going to do here is we're going to drop this down in the water. So then we put our hose clamp on there. Lock that boy in place. So the pump's all set and connected. What we're gonna do is we're gonna end up moving the heater up into here. I am gonna run this filter for another couple weeks, but that's gonna go as well. And I'll show you why. But let's get back to it. Um, next step here is, I guess, turn on the pump. We got a fairly good flow coming in here. It's gonna be loud right now. We've got a decent flow coming in. This is why people love uniseals. But yeah, we're gonna let this fill up. I'm gonna wash it out um, one round. I do gotta do a water change on this pond as well, so I'm gonna do all that in one motion here, um, and I'll get back with you. All right, so real quick, I just wanted to show you guys I'm in the middle of the water change right now. The sponge filter is officially out. Uh, we do have, where my light go? We do have our air stone down there now. Right off here, we got the hose in ready to fill. I'm gonna fill it through the barrel. Um, check for leaks, we got no leaks. Everything is good there. Um, once it is full, I'm gonna unplug the heater and move the heater into there as well. Get the heater out of here. And then I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to run that filter for a few days. I'm going to pull that power head out of here as I won't need it. So let's get going. All right, guys. So we're back. We got the water fully filled up. We got the filter running. There's a little bit of K1 in here just to see what would happen. I got a whole bunch of it that I'm going to throw in here. Um, we got the heater in here. The air stones in here. Water's draining out very well. I am going to run that old filter there, like I said, for another week or two or something like that. Uh, I still got to move the power strip underneath this tank here temporarily. Um, eventually, this power strip is going to be half the size, and there's going to be one on this side, and then one on this side where the dual 75 gallons. Oh, that's a secret. Those, next project, next video coming up in a couple days here. So, these guys are getting an upgrade. That tank is going bye bye. There's two 75s behind there that are going there next to each other in the next video. So if you want to know how to make stands out of two by fours, check out the next video coming out. Um, otherwise, uh, let's add some K1 in here. So what we got here, we got two and a half cubic feet, pre-washed of course. So what the air stone is going to do is it's going to help keep it fluidized along with the, the circulation of the pump will help keep it moving as well. Um, another project that's coming up soon, we got a larger, we got a larger air pump that we're going to be putting in. Um, so that's going to be ran to all the tanks. Um, we're also obviously going to run more of it um, in here just to keep it extra just to keep it extra fluidized. So, quit playing around here and get all this in there.
All right, so we are running. Um, I did fix the pump. What I had to do is the the little elbow in here. Um, I just had to make the hole on the end smaller, so that way the pump was just pushing. Um, and what we've created with that is a nice circular motion in here. I do need more aeration though. Um, so when we do the air upgrade in the next couple videos, um, you'll be able to see how, how much different it is um, when it's really swirling in there. So. So we got the pump nice and quiet now but yeah um for the next video we got a 75 gallon stand build for right here for this tank and the one below it um those are going to go over there one of them will be for these guys i'm going to make another video to show you guys how to make it uh put in a divider um whether you want to do it so it's removable or do it so it's permanent one or the other so we'll get to all that sometime later this week Hopefully in the next day or two. So make sure you make sure you guys are checking out for the new videos. Um, I will be posting links obviously for you guys as well. So hope you guys have an awesome night. I had fun building this. I'll have fun building more stuff for you guys. So hope you guys have a good one. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. Subscribe down below. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks again.